as, as you will hear the saying among Bible believers, watch out for the number 13. Number 13. You've got to watch out for this one. 13. 13 means rebellion, as some Bible believers know. 13 means rebellion. Now, let's look at some examples of 13, why this would match Satan's number. Chapter 13, verse 1, is the introduction to his hellish majesty, the Antichrist. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Okay, so John is standing upon the sand of the sea. Now, we're wondering what kind of sea it is, and I mentioned to you before that it would most likely be the Mediterranean Sea. Why? Because it shows here, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Okay, the Antichrist, he's called the beast, and he rises up out of the sea here. Now, your pastor taught you before, that this beast, he is going to be a Syrian Jew. Anyways, Syrian Jew. Now, if we're going to talk about Syria and Jew, if that's the Antichrist background and ethnicity, the closest, largest body of sea that would be nearby would be the Mediterranean Sea. So that's why we believe that he could come out of the Mediterranean region, the Mediterranean Sea. All right, coming out over here, the beast rises up. Now, what kind of beast is this? Let's keep reading over here. Beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. That matches with Satan the dragon at Revelation 12, remember? Seven head, ten horns. But there's a difference now, which I told you a little bit last time. And upon his horns, what? Ten crowns. Now remember, Satan the dragon, the crowns, they were on top of the heads. In this one over here at Revelation 13, the Antichrist, what he has is the crowns on top of the horns. So that's the, dis uh, that's the difference with the Antichrist and Satan. You might say, why is that? Because the anti, uh, because Satan, as I told you before, his seven kings and kingdoms is representing pretty much all time over there. The Antichrist, he's coming out at the future. Hence, the seven kings which we saw, which I will we'll write them down briefly, the seven kings that we saw with Satan, one was Nimrod, from Babylon. Second was Pharaoh. Now, I don't know how to spell Pharaoh. Is that right? I don't know. Okay. Pharaoh. The next one is Sennacherib. So Assyria. And then after Assyria is Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Now, I wish all their last names was Kim, K-I-M. That would be so much simpler. This is just so complicated. Okay. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. Next one, next one is Persia. So it could either be Cyrus or Darius. The next one will be Greece, which is obviously Alexander the Great or Alexander himself. The next one is Caesar. We put over here Augustus. He was the first Roman emperor. So over here, we get Augustus, Alexander, Cyrus, Darius, Nebuchadnezzar, Sennacherib, Pharaoh, Nimrod. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, this is from all time. The beast is future, right? So because he is future, that's the reason why the kings are going to be ten. Three remaining kings have to be ten. Why? Because these three kings are future. And then we discussed them a bit before, and then I'll go through a little bit in this verse. England, Russia, and then America. So that's why they, this passage talks about ten crowns and ten kings contrasting the dragon with seven heads, seven crowns. Again, why? Why is there a difference? 
because these are modern times. So that's why they added these three kings for the Antichrist. Whereas for Satan, he's representing all time. This one's more future. Okay, so we understand that so far. Okay, I'm not going to explain each and every detail of why this matches with the horns and the heads. Watch the video. Uh, Seven-headed dragon and ten-horned Antichrist. So I've taught you that in Revelation 12 last time. All right, let's continue reading. So we see right here seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns. So these are ten crowns with uh, ten kings. Now, I'm going to show later on at Revelation 17 how these ten kings show up in modern times. So when we look at the modern times, we're going to see how it's divided into ten different empires, and it all has to tie into Roman Catholic. So the Club of Rome has an interesting division, actually. I mean, it's not in Bible. It's Club of Rome. Club of Rome divided the ten kingdoms, which is interesting. But we'll come to that later on in the chapters. We're not going to cover it right now. But just food for thought to keep in mind later on. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Okay, so upon each head of this beast, it's going to be names of blasphemy. Now, me, I've always wondered what the name of blasphemy was. I think there is some stuff online which talks about the name of blasphemy. Me, I have, uh, to be quite honest, I have no idea. I'm not sure. But I do know from context, remember, the best way to find interpretation is by context, and then building by context exactly what the word says with scripture with scripture. So there are a few clues what I can notice over here. It says right here upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Okay, look how this is repeated throughout the chapter. <clears throat> Verse 5. And there was given unto him, that's the beast, a.k.a. the Antichrist, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. So this is something that blasphemes God. So it might share the same idea here. Something that would blaspheme, desecrate God. Look at verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So whatever this name of blasphemy is, it is something that desecrates God and then it also desecrates his people. So it could be one of the names of Satan, perhaps, because uh, some of his names, if you transliterate or translate them, it can translate into English that would desecrate God or his people. Uh, I don't think that it's going to be, quite honestly, the number 666. That could be, that's a possibility some might have thought of upon his head, but it's the name of blasphemy, not a number. So I don't think that would work. It could be, now if you want to use the number, what it could be is that it could be the Latin number, uh, it could be those uh, Roman numerals. I know that the Pope has it, the Pope has it, and then it can translate to actually 666 numerically, so which is, so that could be it too. I do know if you look at Latin words or Roman words, sometimes even Hebrew and Greek letters, you can switch it into numbers actually. Yeah. There is a way to do that. So it might be. So if we go by that context, it could be 666. Wherever the name of blasphemy is, you'll notice what is very important to understand, the Lord saw fit not to mention. So again, remember, this is something important to understand, is that <clears throat> although the Lord does not want us to be ignorant of Satan's devices, he doesn't want to pay too much attention either to give him credit. So that's an important lesson to understand. A lot of people want to discover who's the identity of the Antichrist. Is it Obama? You know, A lot of people want to find out like the deep stuff of the conspiracy, and then they go so much into that uh, soil dirt that if you're not careful, it does something to your spirit and messes with your mind. So it's like a point where you got to back off. Because the more you... I mean, why... Why want to discover, dig into more evil, more dirt, rather than the gold? I mean, there's so much to grow in the Lord, in His Word. I mean, you want to dig deeper into God, not dig deeper into the devil. I mean, dig deeper into the devil, you might become like the devil. I mean, there's a spirit there you got to understand. People who study the occult, sometimes when you watch their documentaries or uh, read their books, 
it really grieves your spirit, actually. The reason why it's so dark and it's so demonic, it messes with you. So, I mean, I watched, I remember when I was like uh, a junior high or something, and then I watched this documentary on Satanism, and good night, nurse, that just, it grieved me that I had to stop in the middle of watching it. So it's some kind of stuff that the Lord knows it's blasphemy. So he doesn't want to dig too much into it. Why? It's not worth it. It grieves the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> All right. So let that be a lesson practically in your Christian life. It might do you some good to get off of YouTube for two weeks. Amen. To stop studying the occult and conspiracy. If you get the shakes after that or you have to watch something, then we know you got an issue. All right. All right. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw, okay, so now we want to find out who this beast is, which I saw, what kind of animal, was like unto a leopard. All right. Oh, to joy. I'm going to have fun drawing this. Here we go. So, this beast is like unto a leopard, okay? And then what you're going to find out about this leopard is that it is not completely uh, the animal of a leopard, so to speak. So this leopard over here, he's going to have, notice the verse says, the feet of a bear. His feet were as the feet of a bear. So that is some kind of leopard, all right? It's got the feet of a bear. But the main body is a leopard itself. That's going to be important to understand, all right? So the main body is a leopard itself. And then notice the mouth. The mouth, notice the verse says, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. See that? So it's going to be the mouth of a lion. This is some strange leopard over here. But it's supposed to have seven heads as well, right? All right, so I'm not going to draw the heads. All right, so I'm just going to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then you get seven there. So this monster... This leopard that comes up out of the sea has seven heads, ten horns, and then the, cr uh, the crowns go on top of the, each of the horns. Now let's keep reading about this leopard. And the dragon gave him his power. Okay, so Satan the dragon get, gives this leopard his power. That's why it matches seven heads. There's no doubt that this beast is Satan incarnate. That's the connection to it because it's copycatting so much of the dragon here. So this is basically Satan incarnate. Revelation 13 will give you the satanic trinity. The third person we'll see soon. But we saw the first one is Satan at Revelation 12. Uh, this, the dragon is mentioned over here at Revelation 13. And then the le leopard is also mentioned here, which is also called the beast at Revelation 13. The Antichrist represents Jesus Christ, mimicking Jesus Christ. Uh, Satan tries to represent God the Father. And then you're going to find out the false prophet will represent God the Holy Spirit later on. Okay, but Satan gives him his power and his seat and great authority. So the Antichrist has authority. Remember what Lucifer said to Jesus? He says concerning about the dominion of the world kingdoms, I will give you this authority to you. Now, notice the key is his seat. The dragon gives the Antichrist his seat. Wait a minute, where is Satan's seat? We read that before. Go to Revelation 2. Revelation 2. This is why the Antichrist is going to be more likely a Roman pope, a Roman connection. Amen. So, why? Because we know where Satan's seat is. We discussed it in our last Revelation study, remember? All right, Satan's seat is clearly Rome. So this Antichrist is Roman in power. He's going to be Roman Catholic then. Revelation chapter 2. Notice what the Bible says at Revelation chapter 2 and then uh, verse 13. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where what? Satan's seed is. 
<clears throat> and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days where an Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where what? Satan dwelleth. Now look at this. Revelation 2.13, brief review why we know this is Rome, is because the, martyr, the martyrdom during this time period where John was writing was undoubtedly Rome. If we're going to look at a prophetic case throughout the entire Bible of Revelation 2 through 3 of the entire church age era, and you know what I mean by that, the past 2,000 years basically of church history, who is the number one candidate empire that persecuted Christians? It's Rome. Even if you look at a doctrinal standpoint of a tri tribulation future reference, we know Satan's seat of martyrdom will be Rome because of Revelation 17. That talks about the Roman Catholic Church having the blood of the martyrs. So clearly, there is no doubt Satan's seed is Rome. During John's time period, local history that time, church history prophetically throughout the entire church age, and even doctrinally prophetically in the tribulation future timeline. Okay, so we does that clarify it? Okay, that should definitely clear everything, okay? Satan's seed is clearly Rome. <clears throat> So that's why if this Antichrist is given his seat, he's given that Pope's seat then. So this would be a stronger, uh, this would provide stronger points why the Antichrist will be a Pope, Roman Pope. Let's go back to Revelation 13. Co coincidentally, where did we find this verse? What's the verse number for Satan's seat? 13. Satan's seat is mentioned in what chapter in Revelation? Chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse 13, Satan's seed is mentioned. Okay, so Revelation 2, verse 13, mentions Satan's seed. And Revelation chapter 13, mentions Satan's seed. You want me to show you a wilder one than that? Chapter 2, verse 13, is Satan's seed. Switch it backward. Chapter 13, verse 2, is Satan's seed. All right, let's go. All right, verse 3, nothing important, nothing important. 